In recent videos, we've dug a bit deeper on some of the more advanced strategies of competitive croconol. We've talked about things like the peel, when you peel everything off the board and force your opponent to bring play back to the middle. We've talked about the other side of that where you will use the hit and stick to almost force your opponent to peel and leave you with an open 20. Now this week we're going to dig even deeper into the next level of strategy when it comes to controlling the board and talk about the benefits of not getting the off. Now that said, there are things within this strategy that are a lot like playing with fire, so we're also going to cover the cautions that you're going to want to avoid if you decide to use this strategy. Let's take a look. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards. If you find this fun and helpful, please go ahead, give us a like, a comment, a share, subscribe. There is lots more great croconole content coming your way. Now please know that what we're going to dig into now is only for when you get to a more intermediate or advanced level of croconole play. In beginner play, a lot of times there's a lot of buttons on the board and this strategy just won't make sense. And this strategy is obviously only for when you are in control of the round, which means either you are up in 20s or you have the hammer. And sometimes it's both. If you're up in 20s and you have the hammer, you are definitely in control. But I'll tell you from first hand experience when you sit across the table from fantastic croconole players you can go from I am in control to oh crap <laughs> in the blink of an eye if you leave that window of opportunity open even a crack they will make you pay and flip that tide on you in a heartbeat do you understand that what I'm telling you is a universal truth that is why when you are in control of the board and play is outside, you want to do everything you can to extend that for as long as you can. Keep that skilled player from bringing play back to the middle just as long as possible. Now here's a scenario where this can set up. If you are in control, you're up in 20s and or you have the hammer and your opponent has a button in front of you. Now we talked about the hit and stick before where you may want to hit and leave your disc stuck in behind the pegs leaving them a tough shot. Let's take that up another level where what you would do is rather than hit and stick, you would do a nice light tap, leave their button on and you may go, oh come on Jeremy, that's completely counterintuitive, don't I want to knock it off? In this situation, no you don't because it will allow you to again extend this play outside. Now they either have to just simply take yours out and you can just employ this strategy again or they need to attempt that double peel which is just, it just makes it tougher for them to force play back to the middle. The other time you can do this is if play is set up to the outside, so it's out in the five ring on one side or the other. Same thing, you can just give it a nice light tap, not taking your opponent's button completely out of play and forcing them into a tougher situation to bring things back. Now as we were writing this script, I initially wrote, okay, there are two cautions that you need to watch out for. And then as I get into it, I'm like, no, actually there's three. And then I type some more, I'm like, actually there's four. So now we're gonna dig into the four things that you need to be careful of if you choose to employ this strategy. The first one is, as you know, in order for your shot to be valid, you need to make contact. So if in your mind you are attempting a nice light tap, but you come up short, you shoot just a little, you ever had that happen? Where you shoot just a little bit light and you don't make contact, there you go. You have gone from in control to your opponent being in control just like that because your disc comes off and gives them an open 20 and they still have a button out there. So in this case, what I'd recommend you do is lean toward a heavier shot. It's not ideal if you take it all the way off, but it's better than coming up short. Your second caution, the second thing I want you to be mindful of is that you should never, ever, ever do this on your opponent's side of the board. It's tougher to do to do that light tap, but not only that, if you are successful with that light tap, but both of those buttons are on their side of the board, that's disastrous because they could use your button to create an angle in 20 and leaving them with another button, they flipped control. Now they're in control with a button on their side of the board. So not only do you not want to do this completely on their side of the board, I would also say you don't even want to do it and end up 
with one button on their side of the board because in that case they would be legally able to ricochet through their own button and create an opportunity to bring their shooter into the middle maybe even drop in a 20 again flipping this tide on you in the wrong direction so make sure that when you're doing this you're keeping it on your side of the board either right in front of you or at least on your side of the board out to the side not giving them any opportunities to angle in your third caution is to not go too deep with this and what I mean by that is let's say you bump their button over to the side so you've got one of each one of each players over here and they do a takeout so now you've got two of their buttons on your side I would never ever recommend that you do that again because it's starting to pile up it's starting to add up and next thing you know you can end up losing the round on the board so if you end up in that case I would still take that out and only leave one of theirs and be mindful to not get behind on the math on the board. And one of the things that will help you not dig yourself in too deep of a hole if you're using the strategy is to get very skilled at the double takeout because sometimes even though you don't mean to you'll end up with two of their buttons on but if you have that skill to dig yourself back out of that hole with a double takeout that will really help you. Now your fourth caution, something you really need to be mindful of, is the situation where it sets up. Let's say you and I are playing and this is the board we're looking at. If I am in control, we've each got one shot left. I'm going to take a shot and then you're going to take hammer shot. It would be a terrible idea for me to use this strategy at that point. I will want to get the takeout because you've only got one shot left. After I do that, you have to hit one on my side. It is nearly impossible for you to win. You, Even the best players are not going to be able to create a 20 out of this situation. But if I was to use that strategy that we're talking about now, and I was to, let's say I left that in the 10, then if you're all you have to do is hit and stick and you can tie the round taking that point away from me. So the overarching message here is just to be very good with your math and be very aware of the situation on the board and make sure you're using the strategy to keep control in your court and not allow your opponent any opportunities to flip this on you. So that's your counterintuitive crokinole tip of the week when you do not get the takeout in order to help you keep control of the board. And your cautions are just to make sure that while you're using this, you're not creating any opportunities for that opponent sitting across from you to take control away from you. So give this a try, see how it works for you, and most importantly, have fun with the greatest game on earth. That's, ah, let me start that again. I'm gonna need to refer to my script. <laughs> advanced strategy of, of <clears throat> world championships of coconut oil.